Bonjour and welcome back. We hope you enjoyed your lunch hour and some uh, good fellowship wherever you are. And I know this morning we learned an awful lot and there's much to discuss and we've just scratched the surface. This afternoon is going to be even more fun. We've got uh, storytelling coming up. I'm your host, Jerry the Big Bear Barrett, Ojibwe from the Saugeen First Nation. Uh, I want to acknowledge one of the things that we do see here, uh, as you see the, the graphics fly by to introduce each segment, is the wonderful logo for this particular event. And I want to acknowledge the youth artist that did that. Her name is Willow Chikani. There it is there. And uh, Willow has done an awesome job there in, in uh, presenting this uh, or designing this, uh, this logo. She is from the Weagamau uh, Lake First Nation. And uh, she comes from a family of artists who have been a big part of the Dennis Franklin uh, High School Art Club for the past three years. She loves art and Willow's favorite uh, mediums to work with are acrylic and spray paint. So that is, uh, what a talent there. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure that uh, paint, uh, painting uh, has a story. Everything has a story behind it. And that brings us to storytelling. And I'm sure there's a story out there about the old Ojibwe man who once had eagle eyes, but now he doesn't. Now I will read <laughs> with my old Ojibwe eyes, our introduction for our next presenter. One moment, please. <laughs> All right, uh, we're fortunate and uh, honored to have Larry Beardy with us. Uh, Larry is originally from Bearskin Lake First Nation, and he was a band member from Muskrat Dam for several, for several years as well. Anyway, he returned uh, uh, his membership back to Bearskin in 2016. He currently lives in Thunder Bay. He has worked in Ontario, Canada, and in Wisconsin, USA. Currently, uh, Larry is a consultant and uh, also a cross-cultural trainer with Indigenous teachings. He's a storyteller, of course, Indigenous legends. Uh, he teaches stories, uh, real-life experience stories, and he's a motivational speaker, a presenter from the Indigenous perspective, and an educator, both in language, culture, art, stories, and tradition. So it's my honor to introduce our next presenter, Larry Beardy. Larry. Miigwech kitsumakwa. Big bear. And uh, also, just to uh, uh, go back to that, uh, uh, that artist's name, um, the last name is actually Chicane. I, I know I said, but but I thought there was an I E at the end, but it's just an E. It's Chicane. Yeah, lots of Chicanes and Weagamau. Yeah. Anyway, um, I just want to uh, say uh, bonjour uh, to uh, everybody, and uh, what I will uh, share with you um, during the next well. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, is uh, just a little bit of storytelling, which I will then continue on for tomorrow's session as well, for the uh, other half hour tomorrow. And uh, what I do uh, as a consultant is I uh, help with uh, translating and interpreting uh, any content that relates with our language, which is Anishinimon. Um, Otherwise, in English, known as uh, Ojikri, which I, I, I personally don't like because people think uh, of our language as a mutt term language that, you know, we, we're, we're uh, uh, to, uh, a part of the part of Cree. That's kind of like a mutt term, which it isn't. We have a very distinct dialect in the uh, Severn River area with our uh, most northern uh, uh, Ojibwe dialect and Shnimo. And uh, it's beautiful and uh, it's to be respected. I respect it and hopefully everybody uh, respects it as well the way it should be. It's a beautiful language, it's spiritual and uh, it has a powerful um, um, impact and uh, force among our sense of identity of who we are as a people in this territory. And uh, also, I just want to uh, uh, tell you a little bit about uh, storytelling and the impact it has uh, for our people. 
and for the world around us. Everything that we uh, share with our stories is uh, totally tied in with who we are as individual people and connection with all people around us, our people, and also uh, everybody else in the, in the global community, and also with uh, the creator and uh, the, uh, the land and the animals. It's all tied in together in a spiritual sense. So when we do our stories, it uh, sends teachings and messages and morals, and uh, it comes in a variety of ways where we have trickster stories, which are done in the wintertime, and they are sacred, sacred stories. And uh, we also have legends, and we also have teaching stories and real life stories. Uh, the types of stories that are told during the course of the year and different times of the season I may uh, uh, vary uh, depending on uh, the seasonal uh, settings, the stories are being told. And uh, we, we believe in our stories. Uh, we believe in our stories because they are teaching stories. Uh, and the, the stories that uh, the storyteller takes us on a journey with, it reflects each of the audience members, each participant that listens to it to go on a journey. And it reflects the prior knowledge and understanding of their uh, life experiences, teachings, and environment and culture uh, to um, sort of connect themselves with the story so that it becomes real. Uh, it has connections. It has teachings uh, about real life situations of what to do and not to do. And um, so that's very important. So that uh, is really, really uh, uh, the bottom line of storytelling is uh, it brings us together uh, to understand where we come from, who we are, and how we interact with others, and um, how we learn to uh, uh, work on our own selves and how we fit in in this environment, the world, and also uh, with our people's lives so that uh, we make positive uh, decisions in everything that we say and do to make sure that the impact we have around this is, is a good thing. And the stories help us uh, uh, navigate our way through that, what to do and what not to do. So that's very important. And for me, uh, storytelling is not something that I uh, decided to do. Uh, it's not something I thought would be a cool thing to do. Um, it's something that was given to me uh, by, by the creator and by the elders and by the land and the animals that I grew up in. And most importantly, it was part of me, uh, I guess, the day I was born uh, to, to have that responsibility for uh, our people, for our language, for our uh, culture and traditions. And I cannot ignore that. I have to keep passing those teachings on. And that's what I do. That opened my eyes when I started teaching uh, a million years ago. And um, so I did not know I had that, that storytelling capacity. I also did not know how much of a gift I was given with uh, our language, languages, teaching languages. Those things came into play. They got activated when I started teaching because I didn't know I had them. So that's what I do a lot of work on, uh, passing those teachings onwards. But one thing I know for sure that I don't have a gift in is singing singing that i'm terrible at it i love to sing i love music i love songs i love to sing and i sing really bad like uh, every time i start singing that I, I i get told to, to stop <laughs> and not do it again it's that bad when i was teaching kindergarten i had to sing a christmas song to them and i, I played a guitar i don't really know how to play guitar that much but i was strumming anyway and then I started singing and all the little kindergartens, all the eyeballs looking at me, they were all smiles before I started. As I started singing, the smiles dropped and then the watery eyes started coming. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And then one of them started crying as I was singing. And then all of them started crying. And then I stopped. Okay, all right, all right. I'll stop singing. 
and they stopped crying. And after that, when I taught music, songs, I used uh, audio equipment or, or video equipment or other means, uh, uh, like uh, doing the hand drum and, and, and doing a rap type thing where you don't have to think, so that kind of worked out. <laughs> anyway, now you see that I talk a lot and I haven't even started the story. That's what kind of contributes to the storytelling is the ability to talk a lot. And that's what I, what I do, apparently. So on that note, I will uh, share with you a story about um, uh, the bear, a bear, Makwa, and the turtle, um, the turtle race. And uh, a long time ago, there was uh, this big bear that walked around all over the forest. And he felt as a self-proclaimed boss, leader, chief, that he was in charge of all the animals because he was the strongest, he was the fastest, and he was the prettiest as well. He had a big, large tail back then. And he bragged about it. He bragged about everything, of how great he is. And all the animals, well, apparently, they didn't really like his personality and what he did, and the things that came out of his mouth and how he made all the other animals feel. All the other animals, every time they encountered the bear, they felt they were belittled, they were cut down, put down, and made to look small. And they felt small. So every time they encountered a bear, they walked away from, from that encounter feeling, well, not good. So all the animals shared that information amongst each other, and they all agreed that what the bear was doing, all the bragging and, and name calling and cut downs and put downs and stuff was not healthy for the forest and the animals that lived there. And they felt bad. Anyway, the bear continued to do that because he was not afraid of anybody or anything. And it was early in the fall, really, but it had snowed and the ice had frozen over on the lakes. Just enough so that, you know, some animals uh, are able to walk on the ice. And there was some snow on the, on the ice. And the bear walked around, of course, bragging about how wonderful and how he's the best animal in the forest. And all the other animals were gagging and throwing up, having to listen to that, and they felt bad. But there was not really much they could do. I mean, for one thing, the bear was right. He was strong and powerful and fast, and they didn't want to, like, take him on. Well, one morning... As the bear was walking along the shore of a lake, he saw tracks on the snow. It looked like somebody was dragging something on the snow. So he followed the track. They were pretty small tracks. And then he came upon the creature that made those tracks. It was a turtle. He stopped and looked at the turtle, and he laughed at the turtle. Not in a good way, but sort of mocking laugh. He like, <laughs> man, look at you. I thought your tracks right there. It started from there, and now you're here. How long did that take you to get there? Well, I started before daylight, because I got to go to the other side there. And uh, yeah. It's, it's been quite a, quite a track. And the bear laughed, man, that took you all morning from there to there. I have traveled the whole forest during that time, seen many things, done many things. Man, that is a small life you got there, buddy. That's your whole life right there for the whole morning. That must be terrible, boring. Like, man, you don't know much, do you? And the turtle looked 
Well, it's a matter of perspective, he said. You know, all morning I've been walking. I've seen many things. I've smelled many things, heard many things. Everything within that environment that I've traveled, I've noticed, I've seen, I've experienced. And I have learned about life. You may have walked through the whole forest and many things, but I doubt it that you remember half of what you uh, encountered. And I doubt that you have grown much up there because you're busy dishing out your vibes instead of taking it in. And the bear got like, well, man, this little guy is like challenging me uh, to uh, something here. And he said, you are so slow. You're the slowest critter on the planet. And me, I'm the fastest. We're like opposites. And then the turtle looked at him. And he said, uh, uh, Mr. Bear, are you, are you saying I'm slow and you're fast? And the bear is like, oh, no, just that. You're not very bright either. That's exactly what I said. And you still don't get it. And the turtle says, well, that sounds like a challenge to me. You want to race and see who's faster? And the bear looked at the turtle. Man, and you are also nuts. Like, ooh, crazy. You're slow and fast. That's the bottom line. And the turtle's like, oh, you're backing down. You're scared to race me, huh? And the bear's getting all steamed up. He's like, I should just squish that little guy. But he said, but he's so slow and I'm fast. All right, turtle, you're on, you're on. We'll race and we'll show you I'm faster than you. And the turtle says, cool, we'll see about that. And he said, why don't you come? Because you say I'm so slow. So I'll need some time to, to get ready for this race. So why don't you come back here tomorrow morning, same spot, and we'll race right there. How's that? And the bear's like, no problem. Fine by me. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Slow one. <laughs> and the turtle's like, whatever. Just make sure you're here. And uh, during that time, their commotion, they're, they're, they're talking back and forth, sound like an argument because their voices were getting raised. Uh, the other animals were listening. They were eavesdropping on their conversation. And they found out about the race. So they went and told all the other animals all over the forest that the turtle had challenged the bear to a race for tomorrow morning. And all the other animals were uh, in shock and also excited. And they wanted to see what happened. So they all uh, uh, decided to come to that uh, spot for tomorrow morning to watch the race. They couldn't figure out what the turtle was up to. They thought he had lost his, you know, marbles for challenging the biggest, toughest creature, the bear to a race and they all thought Man, there's no way the turtle can win that but there was always hope there's maybe there's something something magical about this and then they were off on their way and then the bear went about bragging about this and that and then the night went by the bear woke up and he went back towards the shore of that lake. And he came on the shore and there was all these tracks everywhere now. He's like, man. And then he saw all these animals out there along the shoreline. He's like, whoa, I got an audience. Cool. Now they will know for sure. And they will see for sure how powerful and fast I am. Poor little guy. He's got to learn the hard way, but sometimes that's what it takes, he said. He came upon the shore where the turtle was waiting. And he looked and he saw 
where they were going to race. It had been like set up neatly. There was the pathway. There was a there was a stick, a long stick where the starting uh, point was, and beside that stick there was a little ice hole. And then right across to where they would be running, on the other side was a long stick where the finish line would was, and then between altogether there were like four ice holes, same distance apart. And he went to the turtle and said, all right, let's do this. Okay, what's with, what's with the ice holes? Are we, are we going fishing or what? And the turtle said, dude, you run, you are powerful and you run fast. So I give you the surface of the ice where you can run so that you can use all your powers and claws to dig on the ace and run as fast as he can. Smooth. Give it your best. Me, on the other hand, that's not my thing, really. I'm, well, I'm a water creature. Ice holes, right? So when we start, I dive into one of those ice holes. And I swim under, you know, swim. Yeah, that's my thing. I swim, you run. And then the, the next ice hole I see, I'll stick my head up so you'll know where I am. And uh, I need to take a, a, a breath to breathe, right? And then catch my breath and then go down again. That's how it's going to work. Is that okay with you? And the bear's like, no problem. Like, sure. Anyway, so... Everything was all set up and they got ready. And <clears throat> the turtle got ready. His little claws were on the, the, the pool, the stick. And in front was the ice hole. And the bear got ready. He dug his sharp claws into the ice. And then one of the animals that was uh, uh, watching, watching the, uh, the race, and keeping track of what goes on, got ready and says, I'll count to three and then say, go, and then you go. First one to cross that uh, finish line wins the race. Got it? And the bear's like, no problem. I'll be there in a second. Turtle's like, well, I'll give it my best. <laughs> so they got ready. And then one, two, three, go. And they were off running. Now, you should have seen... Uh, the, the turtle go he climbed over the pool slowly well that was his fastest speed and then plop he went in the water but by that time the bear was like just flying on the ice ice snow flying everywhere the animals well they didn't really notice the turtle because they were mesmerized by that power and speed of that bear he was fast man he wasn't kidding about his strength and speed. And they knew for sure that the poor turtle didn't have a choice, no matter what he's up to underwater swimming down there. Anyway, as the bear approached the first, well, this would be the second ice hole. Up popped the turtle's head in front of him. He's like, what? <laughs> How did he get there so fast? And he's like, never mind, I'll just have to pick up more speed and just, I'll beat him anyway. So he ran, but as, I, as the bear approached the hole, the ice hole, the turtle looked back and said, oh my God, that bear is fast. And then plop back in, he went. And the bear ran as hard as he could. And then he came to the third ice hole. Just about when he got there, Pop! The turtle's head popped up again. Looked back and said, whoa, you're fast, bear! And then clunked back in. The bear's like, man, that little guy's fast. Everything, everything I got, I will put in on this last stretch. And then he ran as fast as he could. And just before he got to the finish line, 
there was the turtle climbing out of the ice hole. And just before the last jump on that finish line, the turtle fell over that finish line pole. And then boom, the bear flew by. But the turtle won, and all the animals saw that. And the bear couldn't believe it as he put his brakes on, his, his claws digging into the ice and snow, and snow and ice flying behind him. Screech! And he stopped, and he's like, look back. He couldn't believe the turtle beat him. How? Man. And then there was a big applause from all the animals cheering on that turtle. They were like, man, our hero, our, the turtle, we should make him our new leader. He's the, he's the best. He beat the bear. And they all were like excited and happy. And they laughed at the bear. And the bear was so embarrassed. He didn't want to face all the animals after that. He ran off across into the forest and then he went and crawled into a cave and then he went to sleep he didn't want to come out anymore he slept there for a whole long time that's kind of how you know his hibernation started during the winters although there's another story and before that actually happened but we're out of time so what i want to say is sometimes uh, uh, all people, all creatures need to be taught a lesson to learn and understand the right way of doing things. So as soon as all the animals had left, the turtle that won the race, he called out, all right, we're done here. And all the other three holes from the finish line Pop, pop, pop. Three other turtles' heads popped up. <laughs> they beat the bear by using their, their brains. There were four turtles. Under each ice hole was a turtle. And when they heard the bear coming close, they popped their head and popped it back in and stayed there. So they all tricked the bear, but the bear didn't know that. They thought the turtle beat, beat them. So, so that was a hard lesson for the bear. To bring the bear back down to humility. To really use the strength, the speed, the power he was given. To help others lift up their spirits, feel better about themselves. Not to put them down and make them feel bad. So that's what the, the, the teaching was intended for, for the bear. And the bear learned. From that time on, the bear wandered the forest with humility. And the animals really liked that change in the bear. And they always followed him around and accepted him as part of their family. And the bear enjoyed that. He felt, he felt good. And he felt bad about all the times he heard other animals, with the things he said and the things he did. So that's one of the teachings in our stories about the, the message in that story. It's about real life and how we uh, car carry ourselves to watch what we say and what we do, to make sure that what we do is positive and has a imp uh, positive impact on others around us. And use the gifts that we are given to help others, not to put other, others down and stuff like that. On that note, I want to uh, uh, end my session here because it's 146 now or one around there anyway. Uh, so my time is up. So uh, miigwech. Uh, Thank you. All right. Chi Miigwech, Larry Beardy. Nice round of applause for him. An internet Yay. round of applause. There it is. <laughs> I always, always enjoy uh, hearing uh, stories about our sacred animals mm -hmm. and uh, the seven sacred teachings. And it, it uh, always uh, delights me. 
Uh, the good news is Larry will be back tomorrow yes. with uh, another storytelling session, and hopefully we can get some questions from you. If, you, if somehow you want to involve storytelling in your language curriculum, yes. Larry will be here, and uh, we'll answer all. all. <laughs> He'll reveal all. Every single one of them. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, quick note. Thank you again, Larry. Um, yep. On our last session, uh, we uh, neglected to announce the play to win code word for the last session, all right? So if you're playing along and you wanna win games, there it is on your screen right now, creation. Play to win code word is creation. So write that down and uh, play to win code word creation. I feel like I'm announcing bingo here. Under the B, 11. Under the B, 11. Under the B, a couple of skinny ones straight up. But anyway, creation is that uh, play to, to win code word for our last session. And I believe we'll have more code words coming up uh, throughout the afternoon as well. And we want to uh, remind you that we're playing for uh, some wonderful prizes, including a choice of a $100 gift card from Kirk and the uh, Ojibwe Cree Cultural Center. Okay, so we're going to have uh, four draws and a grand prize of, uh, oh my goodness, uh, you see that logo on the, on the page now, Willow's Framed Artwork. It will be our grand prize. Wouldn't that be awesome to have that? And as you can see, our next play to win code word is experience. Experience. So write that down. Play to win code word experience on this particular one. All right. Okay. The afternoon is going to continue. We're going to take a short break till two o'clock. Then David Thompson will be here to join us and we'll tell you more about David and all his wonderful work when we discuss cultural immersion, land-based learning, land-based learning. All that's coming up here on the big conference. Thank you for joining us. We'll take a short break and we'll be back. Miigwech.